Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to today's Daily Boost. Jesus is alive and the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I am excited to invite you to another episode. This is your host, Dr. Charles Diffin here, and I am looking forward to it. We had to deal with a few uh, technical issues. That is what live television will cause you. So, but I'm glad that you're patient enough to wait and uh, we are going to reach out to you in another uh, great message that the holy ghost just gave to me i want to welcome uh, kelly allen god bless you and uh, our international director princess reka welcome aboard we love you and uh, we have sandra egan god bless you and we have uh, martha all the way from the uk that's the the embassy in london and in Turo. And that we have Demetria Zinger. God bless you, sweetie. Love you, love you. We have Wayne. Wait, Wayne, all the way from Jamaica. God bless all of you. And thank you for joining us today. We are making some progress. We are building up on some of the wonderful things we're doing. A few things we're going to do. I know we started, we're starting a little late today. But we, you saw the uh, info that came out. We had to uh, reboot the whole system. That's what happens. And Dixie, God bless you. I'm, I'm glad you joined me today. God bless you. So um, we are making sure we can, we can get this um, broadcast to you. And it is another great day. We have Donna Prendergast. God bless you. Prendergast, God bless you. And I'm glad you joined me. And we have uh, our Marjorie of the embassy in Dubai. Welcome aboard. Uh, it is glorious. It is glorious. Welcome, welcome, welcome all of you that have joined me today. A few things you're going to do, share this with as many people as possible. We're going to get started today. And I have something glorious I'm going to share with you. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to change the channel. Too enough, you can miss a lot of things. And <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to do this. Uh, normally, don't read some personal things that come, but I'm not going to mention the name. You know, always understand this, that people would intersect what you're teaching based on where they are at the time. People always come to you, and uh, when you're saying something, they might, not, they, they might think they understand it at a time, but it's not normally the case. So I, I thought we're going to have fun. And this is, um, I'm going to read something that uh, one of the family members sent to me. I, I thought it was very cute. And, but I'm going to share it anyway. I know um, the person wouldn't mind me sharing this. And um, we'll see, we have Chris from Davenport, Iowa. Welcome aboard. And Faith, all the way from Louisiana. Bless you. Love you. Welcome aboard. And I am, it is going to be very great today. You cannot miss today. So a few things we want to do, share this with as many people on your group. And uh, that way we can get started. And um, I want to teach, I want to go fast. It is Triumphant Thursday today. It is Triumphant Thursday today. Welcome on board. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful today. And so get yourself ready. A few things we want to put out of the way. You want to register for the Power School of Miracles. Coming up 19th to the 25th. Uh, it is eternity now. You don't want to miss it. I say to you, if you are going to operate by faith, one of the things you have to do is learning to release your faith to be here. That's an easy thing to do, releasing your faith to be here. The hotels that we have special rates on the hotels, and it is glorious. It is going to be absolutely fun. So get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. We are, we are going to be rolling as quickly as possible today because I want to share something. We've been talking about um, fort, the word fort. We've been talking about that, but I want to bring a different angle. And I see mercy. I, are you still in London? You have to connect with, with the, the, London, the London family there. Welcome, Mercy Ikeji. God bless you. We enjoyed you coming on and, and um, we'll be sharing a bit of your testimony sometime. Hopefully we can have it recorded wherever you are in London. And um, it is going to be great. You want to register to come to the Power School of Miracles. Now, it is not a, uh, it's not a conference. It's a school. It's not a school. It's an experience. It's an experience. Those of you that have been to power school, you know what I'm talking about. And we have Lima Charlie. God bless you. Welcome on board. It is going to be 
absolutely glorious time in the presence of God. So it is triumphant Thursday, and I want to make sure you are on board today with what I want to share. It is going to be glorious. So I started by saying that um, normally people will intersect with your knowledge based on where they are based on where they are. A lot of times people will tell you, I understand. I understand. And I see favor is on, bless you. I'm glad you joined me. No, a lot of people tell you, I understand what you're talking about. Uh, some of you heard about the story with uh, Apostle Everton. We were, um, we were in a place, I think uh, Fort St. John, all the way up close to Alaska. And I was teaching a message there, and the Apostle Everton was there when I was teaching it, I believe it was 1998 or 1999. And we were, I was talking about it. It was, I see Mark, Mark, welcome on board. We were talking about some of the things. Um, I was teaching about the kingdom, the power and the glory. And Apostle Everton was there taking notes. He just had seven years of Bible college. He was listening to me. And back then, in 1998, he told me, I got it, man. A man of God, I understand you. It took him another five or six years. He called me out of the blue and said, man of God, this was in the early morning my time, excited. He said, I get it. I was kind of a little curious. I'm like, what did you get? He said, I get what you're trying to talk about. I said, what do you, what do you mean? He said, when you were teaching about the kingdom, the power, and the glory, I just listened to it again. I finally got it. I started laughing. I said, you woke me up for this? I said, I thought you got it back then. In all the words, people are going to intersect with you at different places where they are. See, when I'm saying some things, write it exactly the way I say it. Please don't write it based on what you underst your understanding is at this time. Just write it the way it is stated word for word and that way when the revelation comes it would explode onto onto you i hope you understand that and we have mark i had a wonderful conversation today with uh, mark mark was in our meeting mark back in 1990 what was that 1998 or so mark was in my meeting in a great big church in edmonton canada it was glorious so we were talking about it and Mark reminded me of a, an amazing miracle that took place where a, young, uh, 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 a lady that was blind received her sight. He was a witness to that. So I didn't know that Mark, yes, he says 1998. I didn't know that we go back a long way, all these years, and finally he's home. Welcome aboard, Mark. It, it was glorious. And he was telling me some of the miracles that happened in the meeting in Edmonton. Great miracle campaign. I see Daphne. Now, Daphne is our baby from way back in Elmira, New York. <laughs> this is amazing. Way back there in 1995, 96. Oh, my goodness. All the way back then. And I see she's on board. Daphne, we can't wait to see her at the Power School of Miracles. The children are all grown up and they're doing very well. Welcome on board. And it says, uh, Mark says, You've never left my heart. Oh, Mark, you're so precious. I love you. I'm so glad we are connected. And uh, Daphne, oh my goodness, that's a long time ago, 1990s. Uh, some of the young ones here were not even born by that time. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> they are, they're smiling here. <laughs> Way back then, it was just a glorious time. Glorious time. Tremendous miracles. <laughs> and she says, I'm at my son's graduation. Tell my grandson that I am proud of him. I am very excited. And we see Anne. Anne was with us all the way back in 2000 in uh, Copenhagen, in Denmark, first of all. She was with us all the way in Rinkabing way back then. And uh, my goodness. So I, I was talking about how you intersect knowledge. How you intersect knowledge. You know, when you're talking to people, they seem to agree with you. But their agreement is not necessarily what you are teaching. They are agreeing with you based on what they receive. It's amazing. I can speak for one hour and somebody tells me, yeah, what you're saying, I heard it before. And they give you one line. Now, I spoke for an hour and all they can relate to is one line. So basically, 
they are oblivious to the rest of the things you have said because they are only listening and filtering based on where they are in life. But I'm going to teach you something amazing. Enlarge your capacity. Let God just speak to you and don't try to you know, stifle him with your throughput or your pipeline by bringing a small container. In other words, open up. Let the Holy Ghost just fill you with his fullness as you're hearing and you're living every day. It begins to come out of you. Some things you heard from me a while ago will just pour out of you. You won't even think about it. In other words, don't filter what you're hearing with your experiences. Rather, let God be so enlarged in your heart that as you're hearing, let him take form in you. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dixie said, was I born then? Well, if you've been doing ministry 36 years, you probably... <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Daphne says, remember when I said the words will come out in your mouth as fire. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are so sweet. But I'm talking about how you receive the word today because I am going to share with you something amazing. It has been such a glorious time. So I, I know um, this is the, the message that came. Uh, it, it came to me, I think, yesterday. And um, from one of my... Uh, one of my, my children in the ministry. It says, good morning, dad. If the person is on, the person would know. It said, I was reading my notes about rediscovering the kingdom 2014. I did not have a clue back then what I was writing down. But still, I'm so thankful for all the teaching again and again that you do, did not Keep it for yourself, but you are tirelessly teaching us all what a sacrifice and what a gift. I just come in to tell you that. Thank you. You are so precious. I'm going to tell her name because that's such a sweet thing to say. That's Frida. Frida and Alexander. I love them so much. Wonderful, wonderful people. It is amazing. And I see we have, uh, we have uh, all of you joining me. I I'm so excited. But what I'm saying is... When I make a statement, write it exactly how you heard it, not how you think I'm saying it. Because I was going through some of the things online, and I just told Solomon, I don't think uh, they really got what I was trying to convey. When I say to you that you are God's live streaming. Now, some of you are thinking live streaming like live streaming videos no i am saying that you are god's l-i-f-e life streaming out to the world <laughs> it's just a kind of play on words live streaming you are l-i-f-e streaming out to the world and you are l-i-v-e life that means direct immediate and now so that is the play on the words live streaming so I hope you understand what I'm talking about. I see research is on. Bless you. See, when you understand that you are God's live stream and life stream, in other words, you carry the life of God in you and you're streaming that out of you. Life stream. That means out of your belly flows rivers. Rivers. Life stream. You are a river of life flowing out to the world and wherever you flow out you bring life to that place are, are you catching on to what i'm saying now so you are god's live stream l-i-f-e life streaming out and l-i-v-e live stream you are god's life l-i-f-e life streaming and you are god's live streaming you are live streaming god's life live streaming god's life you understand that now. I hope you, ca you caught on to what I'm talking about. You are a carrier of rivers. Out of your bellies, rivers of life-giving water that nourishes people wherever you go. Isn't that amazing that you are the nourisher of those that listen to you every day? You get up in the morning, something phenomenal. 
something amazing is happening to you. Hallelujah. So you are living proof that God is at work. So I, will, I wanted to bring back some of the things I said yesterday, but I, I thought, you know what? I have too much to share with you. I couldn't even get to um, four lines of the last couple of days. I've been in line two. So um, I'm going to just stay there and continue because I want you to get something every day, something fresh and something loaded. Are you with me? So I'm talking about intersecting knowledge to you. We're going to read a, a wonderful verse of scripture today that can highlight this. We, we've been reading Matthew 5, 14. It says, you are the light of the world. And a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You are a city set on a hill cannot be hid. And the Bible says in verse 15, you cannot, you know, let's go to Matthew 5, 15 now. It said, neither do men light a candle and put it on the, a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light to all that are in the house. You give light to all that are around you. Hallelujah. Then we go to the next verse. It says, let your light so shine. Isaiah 60 verse 1, arise and shine, for your light has come. For the glory of the Lord is reason upon you. That is wonderful. That's beautiful to read those scriptures. But what does that mean? It tells you darkness has covered the earth. And even greater darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise. And something will happen. It says for the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. His glory shall shall be seen when God rises the glory is revealed so you understand where we're coming from from with this understand that while you're listening to me those fears those things that has kept you bound it's breaking and you're walking free of those fetters those things that hold you bound those limitations of the society the community telling you, I think about those in Canada, when the government is making rules, telling you, you can't do this, you can't do this. just go out and love people and see whether they can arrest you. Hallelujah. Against love, there is no law. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine before men so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, I want, I want to read something today get you into the flow of what i want to share today are you are you with me ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. we're going to be reading a few scriptures there and i want you to see what i'll be sharing uh today i know it is going to be triumphant thursday for real for you are you with me hallelujah now notice what it says in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace verse 8 says this he says we're in verse 8 we're in he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence he has abounded towards us i'm thinking about god's liberality think about that god abounding towards you he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence in other words the wisdom of god is streaming out of you do you realize this you can go to a place and engage the people there in a very amazing conversation because god in you is overflowing abounding towards you in all wisdom there is an overflow of god god's wisdom god's prudence when you open your mouth you will defy the professors. You will defy those that are professionals. You will defy the psychologists with your wisdom and insight, insights into things. That is the advantage you have. Totally different from what other people are used to. You are the ones that God can abound towards so that he can flow through you to the world. Are you catching on to what I'm talking about today? Now, hear this. We're going to read an amazing scripture in Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. We're going to read that. 
I want, I don't want to go straight to the verse that we're going to pick up and read, but I want us to go and read from verse 1 of Matthew 17, and we're going to read that through. It says, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them up into a high mountain apart. You see, God always wants to take you higher into the place where you're separated from everybody so that you can see things differently. And the Bible says, and he was transfigured before them. He was transfigured before them. And his face did shine like the sun. It wasn't a figure of speech. It was an actual thing that happened. He became light. Oh, come on. Can I talk to somebody today? He was trans. There was a change that happened that his physical body was light beams coming out of him. If you, some people that say they go to heaven and they're looking at God and they say they try to describe God, how can you describe light beams coming at you? It's kind of interesting because God is light. Have you ever looked directly at light? Can you even hold on to light? It's just a stream of light coming out of him. That's what I'm talking about. See, when, when you are around him, all you see is light. Lightning, thunder comes out of that light. There is an atmosphere in the secret place where things are different from just coming to heaven. That secret place, light is all that you see. When people come to heaven, they will see this place, that place. But when you take to the secret place, all you see is light. The Bible says in approachable light, that is the secret place where God really lives. Hallelujah. So when you come to that place, something ha happens. The Bible says he was transfigured. His physical body was just like a beam, a ray of light shining everywhere. His face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. Oh my goodness. I'm talking about understanding how to attract the best out of life still in that series how do i attract the best out of life you do that by shining out as light we have a subtopic today that i'm going to let you get in in a, in a second but i want you to understand this he was transfigured before them and his face that shine as the sun and his raiment white as light that's what happens when you put light inside a piece of clothing it will look for any space to shine out. His raiment was as white as light. There is something tangible in you that will shine. Let's keep reading that scripture. Hallelujah. And it goes on. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking with him. The law and the prophets represented them. And talking with Jesus the law and the prophets. But you see, Jesus, I want you to pay attention. The law and the prophet were there talking to Jesus. And behold, they appeared. Let's keep reading the next verse. It says this. I want to read it up because I'm going to use that to show you things. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Ninja, Peter, you know, the one that cuts people's ears. You know, you think the people around Jesus were all smooth and sweet and holy. No, no, no. They were a wild bunch. <laughs> they were a wild bunch. Peter, I always refer to him as uh, the first ninja. Ninja. <laughs> that was the Jerusalem ninja, Mr. Peter. He just brings out a sword and, his sword and, and, and slash a man's ear. He always walked around showing his... It, look, look, those in Texas understand what an open carry is. He would open carry his sword. <laughs> the reason it says I'm Peter <laughs> you see when you see Peter coming back off because remember he's a wild sailor he, he doesn't play you mess with Jesus he's coming for you <laughs> you, know, you need some people like that and here was Peter a man that was so boisterous when Jesus says something Jesus will say one he will say two he always was a, ram, a rambunctious guy you know he he was so so 
full of excitement around Jesus. He said, I wouldn't deny you. Second Peter, when Jesus was transfigured, what happened? All he could say is, it's good for us to be here. <laughs> he ran out of speech. If you will, let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah or Elias. <laughs> oh my good name, you're here. <laughs> You understand, when I'm talking about this, I, I, I have this picture of Mr. Peter totally confused and looking at Jesus like, mm, uh, it's good to be here. And Jesus said, well, what, what has that got to do with what's happening? It's good to be, let's just bring, build three tents and camp out. Like a lot of Christians, God reveals himself and they want to build a camp, a tabernacle. But a tabernacle, a moving structure, let's build three tabernacles, he says. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Oh my goodness, that's a whole church service. We can take that one verse and preach it for one week at least. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. In other words, you don't have to listen to me. Whatever the son says, that is what will happen. Because he is in the, he is the beloved. We just had a power school called his beloved. If you understand what it means to be part of the beloved, it is the same thing. It says, hear ye him. When you're in the beloved, everything in the universe listens to you everything must listen to you you speak when god says everything listen to him everything must listen to him the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 in verse 3 let's go read from verse 3 and come up because i want to show you something extraordinary about what we are saying today i just wrote this oh my goodness i'm too excited you you got you got to listen to this listen Blessed be the, Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. You are blessed right now with spiritual blessing. Okay, it's all spiritual, all spiritual. No, 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 no. Let me give it to you very clearly. Spiritual. Every material thing was formed from the spiritual. In other words, he is saying to you, you have the material to create anything. Everything in the natural began from the spirit. And if you have the source in the spirit, all it takes is faith in that word, and you begin to create things in the natural. How did Jesus feed 5,000 men, not including women and children? Because he knew where the source was in the spirit and he brought that by lifting and looking up and then in blessing or releasing power. He broke the limitation of those things and gave it. The day you stop being afraid and you stop, you stop holding on to things and you start breaking and sharing, you begin to go into an overflow of increase. If you keep holding it to yourself, you can never increase. The Bible says the one that withhold it becomes poor, but the one that gives, increase it. That is the kingdom principle. That is what works in the kingdom of God. Do you know that the non-Christians, the, the heathen, the, the non-believers can apply this principle and it works for them? Principles are principles regardless of your skin color. Regardless of your nationality, it will work anywhere in the world. And here it says, He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, because that's where you are in Christ. Heavenly places, you, if any man be in Christ. I hope you're catching on to this. Let's keep reading this because I want to move this very quickly. My goodness, there is something amazing taking place. Hear this according as He has chosen you, you are His choice. To in him before the foundation you are not an afterthought before Adam and Eve came the new creation was God's choice are you hearing me before the foundation of the world that you should be holy set apart without blame no more guilt no more shame hallelujah before him how 
in love, in a love relationship. And that's why when religious people come to you and start causing fear, be careful, be careful. The Bible tells you, be careful for nothing. That's why I enjoy my life. I'm not worried about things. Okay, you don't have money today. I'm not concerned. You have money tomorrow. I'm not concerned. Why? Because I cast all my cares on Jesus. He cares for me. I go to sleep like a baby, get up like a baby, enjoy life like a baby. You know, children, the only thing they know how to do is play. Their work is to play and enjoy. Why? No cares. And you need sometimes to be like that with your father. No cares. Your father has your back. Are you with me? Hallelujah. It says, according as chosen for the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's keep reading this. Hallelujah. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. It was not my idea to have such fun. It was his pleasure. God thought it was a nice setup for you to enjoy his very best. Think about that. You know, religious people don't read this kind of scriptures. They go to the one that says, many are the afflictions to the righteous. I don't read those things. I go to the next line that says, but the Lord delivers the righteous from all of that nonsense. Hallelujah. That's the good stuff. I know people read, all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. I don't read that. I go to the next line that says, but now being freely justified by his grace, I have peace with God. That's the good stuff. And that's why I am full of vigor and life. No sickness in my body. Poor little devil. Poor little devil. He has no, he doesn't know what to do with me. And he just hangs out in the corner with all the demons. And they say, well, what, are, what are we going to do? Should we attack? And the devil said, please, Charles is in town. Clear out. Apostle Charles is in town. Just, the demon said, what are we going to do? Should we go and disrupt the meeting? He said, if you go to those meetings, he is going to mess you up. <laughs> That's how the demons have their own meetings. And they have a meeting and discuss me in hell. Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, Charles, I know, we are out of here. We'll leave this guy alone. Can I tell you, Satan does not attack everybody? No, a lot of people say things like, well, the devil is so powerful. What devil are you talking about? I am streaming God out of me. I am God's life streaming out of me. I'm life streaming God. I'm life streaming God's life. In him was life. As the Father has life, so has he given me life. When you have that re re revelation, that is, not, that is not religion. That is not being religious and praying, oh, we have to be. Listen to me. I care about nothing. All I do is enjoy his very best. No stress. No drama. Just only good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Enjoying God's best. Money is not my problem. You see, somebody was saying, oh, we need money. No, you need your face in that money. You need your own money. Just like coming to America, he has his face in the money. Hallelujah. You should be the one building new business ideas, building new economies, and doing something great. Hallelujah. Are you with me? <laughs> you understand now why I have too much fun. Poor little devil, he can't do a thing about it. He can't do a lick about it. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. We are streaming the L-I-V, the L-I-F-E, the life of God. We are life, L-I-V-E, life streaming God's L-I-F-E. Hallelujah. You are beaming God to your world. You are the coming attraction. You are the movie of God, the living epistle of God, wherever you go. In the business world, in the music world, wherever you go, you are streaming God out to your world. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Enjoying my relationships and enjoying everything. I don't like stress. When people come, we just have a good laugh all the time. You know, sometimes, you know, we're coming back, we're coming to the embassy, coming to the studios, and I'm talking to, to um, Solomon or the guys with me. We just laugh almost all through the, the drive. Talking about ideas, talking about life. It is supposed to be like that. You know, people have this picture of Jesus walking with the disciples with a somber face, holy Jesus. I, I see these Christian movies when Jesus is about to heal the sick and it's like slow motion. 
<laughs> He's like, touch the eyes, make the saliva, mold it, you know, in the, in the ground, and then touch the eyes and sit. And the music in the background, soft, sweet music. Uh, do you think that there was music when Jesus was there? There was no music. <laughs> it was raw, live, and direct. They experienced the tangibility of love. I have, this is what Jesus did. He, he was spit on the ground like a regular person, spit on the ground. Everyone's wondering, what is he up to? He makes mud, and he looks up at the guy, and then starts putting in his eyes, and, uh, and, just, and then he says, go wash. Just like you would do it. Nothing fancy, no music in the background to create the, the atmosphere. No, he is the atmosphere. In him we live and move and have our very being. He, when he touched the eyes, go wash, and the crowd marveled. Or he will just say, receive your sight. The word leave his mouth, and the eye will open. What a wonder. That's what I'm talking about. When the beam of God, the life, the light of God begins to stream out of you, something amazing begins to take place hallelujah are you with me so a lot of people don't know that and so what they do they're looking for religion they're looking for this they're they're trying just get enough jesus so that the real one you be immune from the real one just enough inoculation so that you can be immune from the real fire of god hallelujah that's what a lot of people do just give me enough jesus so that when the real one comes i can be immune to that one no I want the fullness and I have the fullness. What am I saying to you? Now listen to this. Here is Jesus fully revealing the glory. Let's look at Ephesians chapter, we're looking at chapter 1 from where we were. I want us to read that scripture again because it is full of glory. It says, listen to this, according to the good pleasure, the good. The pleasure of his will. His will for me is very good and is pleasurable to him. The Bible says the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. If God can be excited about his servants prospering, why wouldn't he be excited about you, his son, you, his daughter, prospering? If the servants, the servants' prosperity makes him happy, a definite thing that the son's prosperity or the daughter's prosperity will make him totally elated. Hallelujah. I mean, when you're prospering, God is beaming and smiling and he's saying, there you go. That's what I'm expecting from you. You are my expression to the world. Are you with me? That's what I'm talking about today. Now, hear this. Let's keep reading the next verse. The Bible declares this to the praise of the glory of of his grace to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made you accepted in the beloved let's go back and read matthew chapter 17 again i believe verse 4 it says uh, the bible declares that he says this is my beloved son he says he has made you accepted in the beloved Let's go to verse 3. He says this. In verse 3, it says, And behold, I appear to him. Um, Moses and Eli, Eli is talking with him. Let's go to verse 4. And the Bible says, it says, And Peter says, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you will, let's make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elias. Let's go to the next verse. While Mr. Peter was talking, here comes God's endorsement. I love it when God endorses you. You don't wait for this group to endorse you. You say, well, he's a really good Christian. Invite him to your church. Listen to me. My endorsement is from headquarters. Jesus was not endorsed by the religious group. In fact, they tried to kill him. The religious people, uh, establishment of the day, tried to kill Jesus. The day you discover heaven in you and begin to operate like heaven, the religious status quo would not know how to handle you. They would try to throw scandals. They would try to throw all kinds of things at you so that they would disinvite you. Listen to me. Don't worry about that. The world is yours. 
God has given you all things, including their cities. Hallelujah. You're about to enter cities and go and inherit houses that you do not build. You're going to take over cities you do not work for because God's glory is streaming out of you. Get ready. Some of you are about to take over your cities. You're about to shake your region. Get ready. I'm speaking to you under this glory that is in this place. Now, are you with me? They will try to disqualify you because you don't look or you don't, you don't come from their school. Relax. You come from headquarters. You have been made accepted in the beloved. The Bible says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen to him. In other words, God is saying, I delegate everything to my son now. And the Bible says, the father can do nothing except he sends the son to do it for him in other words when god has decided okay you are in charge god does not micromanage you he just trusts you even when you make a mistake you report back to headquarters and he says don't worry we get it right next time let me give you some wisdom and you get that wisdom you get back on track and you're accomplishing great things don't worry about the past mistakes a lot of people are so concerned about what people think of them until they become paralyzed and can't move what am I saying to you? It's time for you to connect with the big things that God is doing. Now, hear what it says. The Bible says, let's go to the next verse. I want to show you some amazing thoughts. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face. And we are afraid. They've never experienced anything like that. They fell on their face. And they were very afraid. Because when the glory shines, something happens. Let's keep reading now. The Bible says this. Then Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. What a wonder. I love hearing his voice. Don't be afraid. Arise and be not afraid. And let's keep reading. Let's go to the next verse. It says, everything clears out. And when they had lifted their eyes, they did not see Moses, they did not see Elijah, they only saw Jesus. The law, the prophets were done. In other words, prophets are servants. This was the generation of the sons. Jesus standing alone, a new breed a new place the bible says in hebrews chapter one i want you to read it the prophets and the laws were done hebrews chapter one let's read it i want to show you something fantastic there the bible declares hebrews chapter one god who at sundry times or time past and in diverse manners spake in us in time past unto the fathers by the prophets in time past Let's keep reading. Has in this last days spoken unto us by his son. So the prophets that used to speak, when Jesus showed up, it was a change of God. The prophets and the laws were fulfilled. The Bible says, grace is it. The law came by Moses. But grace and truth, grace and reality came by Jesus. It says, who in the... Who he had appointed heir of all things, and by whom also he made the worlds. Verse next verse goes, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his personality. Oh my goodness, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he by himself part our sins. He by himself, it, it gets me so worked up so emotional when I think about what God sees in us what does it see in us the brightness of his glory the expression of his personality he sees that in you you might be arrayable to him but God sees you in his finest he sees you in your finest he sees himself in you he punched your own sins with his own blood that's what I'm talking about coming to the place of the the mountain of transfiguration where you are free
from the religious, religious fetters that hold you and you can never grow. You come to the place where God is so real to you and something glorious is coming out of you. That's what I'm talking about. What does God see in us? He sees his very best. Hear this. Let's go back to the scripture we're reading. In, uh, in Matthew 17. Verse 8. It says this very clearly. I hope you're catching on to this. It says, Matthew 17, verse 8. There's so no one but Jesus. 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 The Bible says, He has called you into the beloved. Now, let us go on a journey. Let's go back to verse, verse 1 of that scripture. I want you to see something. Pay attention. This was something that actually happened that Peter wrote. He said, we saw him in his excellent glory. First Peter chapter 1 verse 17. But we're going to read this again. It says, let's go to verse 2. Verse 2 of the scripture, Matthew 17 verse 2. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone, shined as the sun. And his raiment was white as light. 1 Peter chapter 1, let's go to verse 17. I want us to see something there. Hopefully you can understand why the Lord was speaking to me today. Are you with me today? Let's, let's look at some scriptures that will help you build on this. 17. Let's go to verse 1 Peter. Are you with me? Now, what, you see, um, what I want to do is I want to go because there's something so vibrant I want to show you. Let, we'll go back to that scripture in verse 2. Sec, um, Matthew 17 verse 2 because I want to connect this. I don't want to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. His raiment was shining. Pay attention to this. Something happened to him. Hear this. Well, Matthew 17 verse 2, let's look at that. I want you to see this because I want to connect this. I don't want to miss it because it's coming to me just like light. He was transfigured before them. His face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. Hear what it says. Philippians chapter 2, I want to connect this very quickly so that we don't want to miss this. Philippians chapter 2 in verse 13, it says this. For it is God who walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I want you to pay attention to this. It is God who is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, let's go to verse 15. Let's look at what it says. Next uh, two verses down, it says this, amazing. It says, that you may be blameless and harmless blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as light in the world among whom you shine as light in the world among whom you shine as light in the world. Why am I coming, coming with the scripture? You shine as light. We go back again and read that scripture in Matthew 17 verse 2. You shine. You radiate as light. It's not. It's not something that is so far-fetched. No. Hear this again. He was transfigured. My question is, have you come to the place where you are transfigured you are transfigured something happened to you you are changed physically and people cannot really grasp you i'll tell you a story we were having our miracle meeting in norwich connecticut in norwich connecticut here not far far from, from us and this meeting became news all over new england 
all the states in New England, people started coming to this meeting. A revival broke out. Over 4,500 documented miracles took place. In one week, we had 190 deaf people hearing perfectly again. And most of the people that were born again were above 65 years old. Over 4,500. In New England, the hardest place in America, I was told. This is in Norwich, Connecticut. We had over 60 people that were blind that received their sight in just a few days. Miracles after miracles. I still have those promos from back then telling of all the accounting that people had of how the miracles happened. And so here we were. A young lady was sitting in the back there. And I noticed, not kind of a little heavyset lady, she's looking and she wasn't very moved by anything. Everything, I was preaching from the front. My eyes kept going to her. My eyes kept going to her. And miracles started happening. And I noticed she was sitting there just with her hands folded, just like this. Her hands completely folded. No, just sitting there. And uh, at the end of the service, I noticed that she was still sitting there. So I decided to come close to her. I started walking, miracles that night, incredible. I started walking towards the young lady, I think this last but one pew of the building in the church, Norwich Worship Center. So as I came there, she was looking at me, blinking her eyes, and I was thinking, oh, something must be wrong with her eyes. And she's doing this and doing this. And I'm, I'm like, are, are you okay? She kept doing this and doing this. And I was like, are you okay? She, she kept blinking. And then all of a sudden, she started pushing herself, just you know, shuffling down the pew, avoiding me. And when I came close, she, she turned her face at me and started doing something like this. And I was a little concerned. I was like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, I heard this deep male voice come out of her and started manifesting demons were manifesting and this lady and the guys in Norwich were very big guys this this as she began to manifest demons and began to thrash around the place this big guys were trying to hold her down and she was tossing them like little pegs just tossing them left and right and they're flying here flying they're falling on chairs on, on the on the pews over there and she was just tossing them and she kept doing this and I walked, immediately I saw that, I walked to her. I said, you foul spirit, now come out of this woman and let her go. This lady began to throw up and began to manifest. And I said, I don't have time for this. Come out of her. Come out of her. And the demons left this lady. They took her to the pastor's office, totally delivered, completely delivered that night. And I began to ask her what her name was. She told us. And then I began to ask her uh, what, what, um, where she's from. She says she's from New London, Connecticut. And uh, we started talking just about 20 minutes away from us. We began to talk. She was part of a witchcraft coven. This is America. These are not African folks. These are Caucasian. And they had, we have pictures of their witch. They had been involved in a number of human sacrifices. This is right down the road from us here. She, I mean, this lady, she was one of the uh, high priestess that was there, and she was sent to the meetings to come and disrupt the meetings. But she said when she walked into that atmosphere, immediately her powers were neutralized. And do you know the people that made, made the covenant, the witchcraft covenant, that are part of it in New London? The judges in the court system. The police commission, the police uh, head in New London, the, the police people in New London, all some of the strategic people were part of the witchcraft group that they sent to come and shut down this meeting. They couldn't come physically, so they decided to bring somebody that can shut down one of the high priests, and she came. And this lady was completely delivered, instantaneously delivered. And you know what happened? This lady came, and do you know when... I was asking her, so what was going on? She said, as I was coming down the aisle, she kept looking at me and she kept doing this because she was looking at me to find out something in me that she could accuse me of. Hallelujah. She was trying, because when you do something wrong, 
the devil is there to confirm that he is the one causing you or influencing you to do those things. So he was looking at me to see whether there was something he can say, oh, you did this. He is the accuser of the brethren. How can you accuse what God has already excused? That was what happened. She was looking at me. As she looked, she was shocked. She could not see any sin, anything to accuse me of. I didn't know that. I was just looking at her, being my own jolly self. And this lady, she, was, she said she kept looking at me and kept looking at me. And, kept, and then this bright light was shining. That was why she was doing this. I didn't know that. She said all she could see was just, uh, just light coming out of me. <laughs> at that time, I started looking at myself again like, oh, light coming out of me. I didn't see that, you know. But they could see it. They're Raymond. She said, I was so bright. And then she got scared. And that's when the demons started manifesting. And you know what happened to this lady? Totally delivered. And then on her way home, the cops that she was part of the coven arrested her. And they said to her, did you do your job? They said, we know you didn't. Because she was now radiating with that. And this, witch, this uh, witches, they, this policeman caught her and began to really abuse her with, with their, their stick and their guns and abusing her, raping her with their guns and everything. And they, began, they branded her like, a, like an animal. They put, because she came the next day with a branding iron on her and on a, on a side, on her body. She was branded like an animal. This is the United States. Because they couldn't stop her. They tried to kill her, couldn't, and then they told her not to come back. She was there the next day. These are the things we see and we don't talk about. She was there the next day, and then the next day, and then all of a sudden, they, they tried to kill her. They, all they could see was this bright light coming out of her, and then they gave up on her, and then she came, spent some time with us in upstate New York, in Elmira, and she was completely transformed. She was healed of HIV, healed of all kinds of things, and she told us stories that if I told you, you'll be shocked. How she was involved in the killing of several people. They would capture somebody and use them as human sacrifice. This is the United States of America. This is not in Africa. And she was totally delivered, and she, she took pictures. We still have some of those pictures of some of the things they used to use for the sacrifice. They, they had some beads, some all kinds of things. I, I, I thought I was in a witch, witch doctor's hut in Africa. It was crazy. But those are the things we see on a daily basis. This lady was completely delivered. And she became part of our team. She was the one that actually was going through the videos and counting the number of miracles that happened in the revival meetings in Norwich, Connecticut. She recorded 4,500 recorded documented miracles of people healed of all kinds of things she was the one that did it her name her name is called Shelley what a beautiful lady beautiful lady her life was completely transformed because light beam were radiating out of her that in the in the kingdom of darkness they can see the light that's in you what am I saying you are streaming God's light out of you Isaiah 60 verse 1, Arise and shine, for your light has come, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 7 and 8, it says, You are the house of His glory. Are you with me? You are so infused with God. You are made of the light substance. You are light. What is your substance? Light. You are, let me explain to you the, 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 the thing about light. Light is is the only thing in life light is the only thing in life that is a wave and a substance a material photons photons photizol light source if you understand that light is the only constant you see if you can calculate speed anymore or distances anymore you begin to calculate it based on the speed of light let me explain to you what that means you are the light of the world in other words there is a wavelength in you and also there is a substance in you 
Let me talk to you. This is the professor now. You are a particle. You have substance. Faith is the substance, the materiality, the reality, the tangibility of God. You are light. You have substance and you can penetrate. You can come into places. Light, laser, light x-ray can go through the human skin, go to the bones, and they are different wavelength of light. X-ray is just one of them. Sound is part of the light wave. When the Bible calls you light of the world, it's telling you, you can penetrate. You can go to regions that others have never seen. You are extraordinary. You shine as light. Are you with me? Are you with me? Three things the Lord spoke to me about this. It says, your rage. I want to put that up now. Your rage. The second thing, you're rich. And the third thing, you're rich. You're rich and you're riches. What am I saying? Three things today, and maybe I can continue tomorrow. You see, three, I'm talking about you're rich, you're rich, and you're rich. Can they put that on there? I want to make sure you put that on. This is part 11 of getting the best attracting the best out of life i want that subtopic to be there you're rich you're rich and you're rich what am i saying to you what is your rage what is a rage now for some of you are thinking a ridge like a mountain range that connects things there's a there's a protection about you but that's not what i'm talking about let me tell you a little bit what is ridges a ridge in biology is different from the ridges you see when you have a mountain range or ridges is different from ridges in biology what am i saying it means the region of increased gene expression your ridge what does that mean r-i-d-g-e your ridge what does it mean the place of your, let me give you the word again, of your increased gene expression. You have God's gene in you and you are in the place where the full expression and increased activity and explosion of God's gene and DNA is coming out of you now. Hallelujah. The glory is trimming. In other words, there is a, 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 an increased activity. As I'm speaking to you, when you hear the word, there is an increased activity. There's an increase, increase in your gut gene expression. G-E-N-E. -E, the gut gene expression in you. All of a sudden, there is an increased activity as you're listening. That's why your body can get sick, can stay sick. You get healed because there is a reach, a region of increased activity. Are you with me? Something God is doing on the inside of you. He says, it is God who is at work in you. His reach, hallelujah, the region of God. God at work in you. His reach, his region of increased gene activity or expression. God is working. There is a release of God into your atmosphere. Are you with me? Are you with me? The place of increased gene expression. In other words, you are expressing God more and more. As you're listening to me, something is happening. Something glorious is taking place. Hallelujah. And when you do that, what happens? God's realities are coming to you. The second thing is you're rich. How much can you penetrate? How much can you extend can you thrust can you encompass what regions can you impact you're rich are you with me his reach in you now becomes your reach you're rich you reach out to people hallelujah and it comes to the third part which is you are rich what are your riches we are going to be dealing with this tomorrow, my dear friends. It is going to be glorious when we start dealing with this tomorrow. Are you excited? You're rich. 
You're rich, you're rich, and you're rich. Are you with me? I'll be talking about this. I wrote a little thing, just a little thing to get you going. I said, God's rage is our bridge to preach and teach his wondrous love. When each one rich just one, his love and riches we express. That's for you today. I'm going to be teaching on this again tomorrow. What does it mean? What does it mean? God's DNA is escalating in me. It means when I start touching things, there is a transformation. Think about the superhero movies. You see, uh, Spider-Man. What happened to Spider-Man? He got beaten by a spider, and then all of a sudden, he begins to express what a spider looked like. He can just create his own web and all comes there's an increased activity of that spider dna in that man you have an increased activity an increase in god's dna in you all of a sudden you begin to act like your father you are a new creation and something happens because you are a new creation it means god's genes God's DNA is flowing out of you and that light wave is penetrating into your very atmosphere. Are you with me? It goes into your businesses. It goes into your family. It goes to those around you. Your reach is unlimited. I'm talking to somebody today. How big can you dream? How far can you see? As far as you can see, your eyes can see it is yours. What is your reach? And how rich are you? I'm, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow. I'm just, going to, I'm, going to, I'm just too excited to talk about all of this today. You are experiencing a change in the dynamics inside of your system. God is at work in you. Hallelujah. His, the Bible says his own raiment, his own clothing was shining like the sun. Why? His face was glowing. Yours also is glowing. Because there is an increased activity, a region of increased activity in you. You shine as light in a crooked and perverse generation. In a crooked and perverse nation where you shine as light. You shine as light. It's time for the world to experience all of this. I'm, going, I'm too excited. You know what we're going to do tomorrow? You, we're going to get started early. We want to make sure you're here. We're going to connect tomorrow. You can miss part two. Where I'm going to unfold this thing. We haven't even finished the other one. We're talking about F-O-R-T-H. But we're just going to keep flowing. As a, you see, my thing is what not to teach you. Because God wants you to be so full of him. So much of him in you. That he has to burst out of you. Your smile. Your touch. Something amazing about you as you begin to help people around you. It changes everything. I, are you with me? So my thing is tomorrow, you can't miss it. It's going to be Friday fire. We're going to come in full force and it's going to be glorious. So I want to encourage you today. We are gonna, we're going to give you an opportunity. It's triumphant Thursday. Believe for big things today. You're rich. You want to come to a place of activity. You're rich. A place of increased gene activity or expression 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 the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 the brightness of his glory and the express image the expression of his image expression a gene expression you are going to start manifesting God in everything you do in a way you've never seen from today I want to give you an opportunity we're going to give you this great opportunity to make an investment we are believing God for that new video mixer we talked about that to the people at the embassy we we want to make sure we can get a new video mixer part of why we've been going through some of those delays is because we've had some of our we have so much equipment that needs to be upgraded so we're doing it one at a time we were believing god for this five thousand dollar equipment it's video it's different from just audio but it's going to help us go seamless we can go live without having to connect one thing to another because right now we can be on different platforms. We want to be able to be on our TV network without having to connect too many things. One console will take care of that. We want to be able to do that. And also, we still have the jib, the crane that we use to shoot from a high angle. 
so that as we are doing the big miracle uh, campaigns, we'll be able to have the equipment instead of renting it. Because I don't believe that we should be renting equipment. I mean, if you have to do four rental and it's the cost of buying it, you might as well just buy it because you're going to be using it all the time. The same thing when we buy a camera equipment, we use it daily. Every day, we're using the cameras. Because it's not once a, once a week we do it. Every day, we're making sure we're using it. But I want to encourage you, you go to Christlove.org. I want you to sow a seed today. Believe in God for it. Whatever you can do, let us get this thing done. I mean, if you can sow a thousand, two thousand, you can just sow the five thousand, it's fine too. You just said, I want to do something and come on. I want to be a blessing to make sure others can hear this good news too. If you can do that, we would certainly appreciate all of it. it that's what it means in God's part. So if you want to do it also by PayPal, we have the PayPal option. You can go to paypal.me. You see, we bring this to you for free because we receive it for free. But to transmit it, it's going to cost us some equipment to really get the best quality to you. So you go to paypal.me forward slash Charles Indifon and you'll be able to sow that seed today. Let's get going with it. You have to keep improving every single day. Every opportunity given, you want to make sure you can be part of that. And then we want to make sure that you can also have the cash app option. You can go to the dollar sign Charles and even goes right to the media ministry so that we can get this thing going. Are you with me? You got the message for free today. There was no admission fee, but it cost money to, to transmit to the world. Others need to get a chance to hear it too. They ought to hear this good news too. So we have all the options. We have Venmo option. You can go. It's at DR, Dr. Charles, hyphen and defund, and you can be part of that. Are, are you with me? You want to sow something on coming? We are improving on a lot of things. We want to get this thing ready before power school. We want to get this things ready before power school. So you want to get this thing as soon as possible. Let's get it going. Okay? So I pray that this is helping you very, very much. And also, we want to do something else. We have one other option. You can go to, if you're making out a check or a money order, you can make the money order or check, or you can even do um, um, Western Union. It should be Christ Love, or you can put my name, Charles and Different. It goes right there anyway. You know, if you're doing Western Union, you can do that. But Christ Love Media, P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. And I know it is going to be absolutely amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, so, but. I was saying something, you don't want to miss the power school of miracles. The power school of miracles coming up very soon, you want to be part of it. And also, I think uh, Marjorie, I think we're due for another Kingdom Leadership Academy coming up in June. Probably the last, last part of June, we'll do something like that. Okay, but get yourself ready. We want to make sure you are fed with the best spiritual diet you can get anywhere. Okay, so I know that you're enjoying all of this. Let's get excited about what God is doing today. Be part of something uncommon. Let's get this message out to the world around us. And also, let's take it around the world. I want to thank you for joining me today. I see Marjorie Aaron. God bless you. Birgit, Barbara, Faith, Alexander, all of these wonderful folks here. We see um, uh, Chris. And we see uh, Bangani. God bless you. And we see Koran. God bless you. Mercy. You're still in the UK. We got to talk. Hallelujah. Uh, we have um, Alexander. We have Henry. God bless you. We have Ning. We love you. Uh, Ning. The, we're waiting to get that, that TV station up. What a great partner you are in the, in the television. We have Dr. Brian Rubin. Now, if you, if, you are, if you can just enter your name, I'll be able to acknowledge you. I'm just making sure you know I can see you. Uh, Frida, God bless you. And Gloria, my goodness. Wherever you are, just let me know. Just a shout out to you. Mark, God bless you. Martha, it's already said that. Hallelujah. So I'm just going through some of the people I can see on my screen. If I haven't said hi to you, hello. I see Sonia is on. Working very hard. And bring those grandkids for me. I need to kiss them. Big time. <laughs> I see Faith. Bless you. I'm glad to join me today. Hallelujah. And I tell your mom, I look forward to her joining us all the time on the daily boost i hope she's on there today i see pastor david in rhode island <laughs> pastor david we love you what a great job you're doing with the tv network uh, for those of you that don't know pastor david is the president of uh, empower tv and media and um, 
he is doing a fantastic job pushing that making sure we get that going and um man we have really pushed a little bit you've been doing a diligent job <laughs> hallelujah and i see favor bless you and favor ah it's going to be great i see what god is doing in your life amazing and uh, i want to thank god for all of you that join us i see don beamer you got to come to power school don and and i we go a long way way back portland oregon days oh my goodness 20 something years ago my goodness it's so good to see you on here love you love you love you and um, we have a lot of you that are join us um thank you for joining us today and it's another glorious day with another daily dose of your daily books god bless you and i will see you tomorrow